Hello, my name is Steve Paris. I'm the president of Enlight, and I'm going to be talking about the National Christian College and University Benchmarking and Analytics Project that we are spearheading. The purpose of this project is to help Christian colleges and universities use business intelligence and data-driven methods to improve efficiency, organizational performance, and financial sustainability. <clears throat> we initiated this project because uh, through as a result of conversations that we've had with uh, CFOs and others in Christian colleges and universities, and uh, our, through our preliminary discussions, learned that there, uh, in, in terms of the way we understand and know measures and benchmarks and in business intelligence, that right now there is no uh, common source that they can go to to pull the kind of get data together that these particular individuals are interested in having. So we did further research and in, in through webinars and discussions and found that there is indeed an interest in using data and analytics and measures. And uh, so we're starting this initiative to try to fill that gap. Just as a footnote, I do have uh, children who have gone to Christian colleges and uh, through K-12. So uh, Christian universities and education in general are, are important to me and I understand the value and benefits of it. Just to talk a little bit about traditional benchmarkings, because you might be asking yourself, why are we doing this? We already collect lots of data. And the fact is you probably do collect a lot of data. And I'm hearing that there's a lot of data that sits in organizations that doesn't get used. And, and from what I, again, understand that much of the traditional uh, measurement and data collection today is driven by iPad. It's driven by financial reports and others in which you're filling out surveys and forms. Uh, for other organizations and institutions. Uh, and the reason that's important is because that data is not being collected to benefit you necessarily. The data isn't being collected and put it in a data warehouse or what, what have you uh, for your purposes. It's being pulled together by other entities. What we want to do is help you build a system that's built to fit your purposes and needs, especially in the areas of data-driven decision-making, improvement, and planning. Another disadvantage of the current uh, sources of data is the way the information can be accessed and presented. Uh, the beauty of dashboards and scorecards is it allows us to pull together a number of different data types and measures to tell a story. Typically, the information that we get out of some of these compliance and reporting data sites and reports is very traditional in the way it's presented, presented in tables, perhaps doesn't have a historical trend on it, and therefore is not quite as useful <clears throat> as it can be. Our benchmarking analytics model focuses more on decision-making, improvement, and efficiency. So the information we gather is going to be targeted for that. Uh, I bring some deep experience into this particular, um, into this model, having been a COO and CFO and uh, a very keen user of information and data, both in terms of using information to build knowledge and data to uh, help a, an organization focus a line and improve its performance. So our focus is very strategic. We're only going to be collecting 150 data elements, and we're not going to try to do eight or 900, which I think is probably what gets collected vis-a-vis -vis the uh, iPad process. We're going to focus on four areas, revenue, enrollment, student outcomes and experience, and operating and administrative costs. We believe those are extremely important, and what we're hoping to do is collect enough information to help you identify ways to improve or at least send you in the right direction. <clears throat> Another important difference between us and the traditional methods and existing methods is that we use measures to create transparency. Uh, so what we want to do is use the right measures to give us a picture of how every area is doing. And so that if we're going to make a decision in an area or we want to spend money or make a change, that we not only understand the performance of that area or in the data about that area, but we also understand how it's interconnected and uh, impacted by other areas or impacting other areas. So by measuring uh, process measures, by using efficiency measures and productivity and others, uh, we can get a good idea of how the organization is performing uh, and what's driving it and how it compares with benchmarks. Now, keeping in mind, we're only working with 150 data elements uh, there's certainly a lot more data involved in reporting, probably in the range of 800 or 900 just for iPad. 
but I, I hope you'll begin to learn, understand that it's not the quantity of data, measures and data that you have, but it's really the type of measures and how you use them. In addition, another difference uh, with our model and how we approach this is that we use dashboards and scorecards to access and present the data. Those dashboards are designed to help the users visualize the data. Uh, again, when it comes to using data, not everybody is a data expert. Uh, not everybody needs to be a data expert, and we believe it's our job to take the complex, simplify it, and present it in a way that it tells a story and uh, users can draw conclusions relatively quickly. Uh, it needs to be easy to understand and use. If it's too complicated, it's, the fact is it's not, it's not going to get used at all. Uh, it, if, and it needs to be flexible and customizable, and that's what dashboards allow you to do. Dashboards allow you to... Um, basically present measures, and I'll show you in a balanced, holistic way that promote a better understanding of the context of a decision, uh, what's driving it, what the trend has been, and what, if anything, can be done to improve it. Uh, just in case, uh, you know, you I don't know where you're at with analytics. I know when I have individual conversations, I like to be able to understand that. But this graph here, uh, maybe you can try to put yourself in here and ask, where where are we? So this is a survey of, I think it was about 300 uh, higher education organizations. And what this shows is a number of different analytical type tools, such as tracking in student learning, tracking finance and budgeting, monitoring institutional performance, and enrollment management. And there's quite a few more. This red column, in the, these red bars, indicate that that particular application is fully deployed. Uh, these bars are related to the uh, it's being tried. This section is related to planning. This indicates that they're considering use but no plans, and this is they're not considering at all. So you can see when it comes to these top three, you know, you're close to 50 to 60 percent who are in some way, shape, or form using it or trialing it. And if we get up here, we're talking about 80 percent who are seriously considering it. So outside of the Christian college uh, industry, if you will, um, there's a deep interest. And why should that matter to you? Well, the use of data can be a very strategic, uh, high impact part of your overall improvement strategy. Information, there's no doubt, as you can see today, it's exploding in its use. On the business side, it's exploding even uh, astronomically. And why is that? In business, if you've ever heard the term, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. it. There's a lot of truth to that. It's not universally applicable. But the fact is that the more knowledge and intelligence you have on your organization, how it's performing, the external environment, your students, your customers, the better you are able to devise strategies to help you achieve your goals by serving them. And so I would just want to I just bring this up because <clears throat> I think it's important that you realize that you are going to be and will and probably are competing with others who are using data to their advantage. So probably the best response to that is to begin to learn what can be done with it. Not that you have to jump in with both feet, but learn what can be done with it, learn how to use it, and begin to think about how you're going to put, put this tool into your toolkit as you try to advance your own organization. Uh, it's really just about when it comes to using data, continuous improvement. Uh, small incremental changes identified through this process of measuring, for example, facilities cost per square foot, identifying that perhaps you're spending 50 cents more than others, being able to pinpoint why am I spending 50 cents, I'm sorry, 50 cents per square foot more, and then being able to target that particular improvement that will bring your cost per square foot number more into line with where you should be or even better than average. So why would that matter? that frees up cash that can be used for other purposes, financial stability, salaries and benefits, more programs, what have you. So that's really the idea behind the, the uh, improvement side. Obviously on decision-making, it's important to use data when you can, especially when it comes to defining what's expected from a particular investment or what kind of performance improvement might be expected in a program if you did make changes. So the overall benefits, as we see it, for analytics to Christian colleges and universities are listed here. But basically, the bottom line is that it, they're tools that can help you be more efficient, focused, strategic, um, 
and and achieve higher levels of performance. It's, it's we're going to help you share information in a much easier fashion than you can now and provide benchmarks that can be extremely useful when it comes time for planning and decision making. We're going to help streamline the process by the way we approach this. Uh, the fact is that right now we're collecting all our data in a spreadsheet, but if we wanted to, we could pull, we could take your data, put it into our data hub and derive the analytics from that, depending on what data set you send us. So you can see there's lots of benefits for doing this. The fact is that there really is no cost other than your time if you choose option one. It, if nothing else, you're going to identify strengths and opportunities to improve. And in even one minor cost savings uh, will more than justify the nominal effort that you're going to put into this. I just want to say a few words about Enlight and who we are. Uh, we, we have developed over the last eight years an analytics planning and reporting platform. And what that means is that we have analytical tools that, that we offer uh, both really almost as a service as well as a tool in which we take your data, analyze it, and help you identify strengths and weaknesses and trends. We have planning tools in which the results of that can be incorporated into our planning dashboards so that you can set goals that are visible, that can be cascaded down to different departments and can be used to track progress towards the goal. And the reporting platform is the same thing. We have dashboards that can be used for reporting on progress of strategic plans and improvements, as well as community uh, dashboards. It can be used to keep your community informed about your progress. Uh, we, we, we really pride ourselves in the educational measurement system. We've, we've invested a lot of time uh, and experience into using data, and consequently, we've developed a very excellent system that's been enhanced uh, because an association actually gave us the tool that they use to collect data and share with their members. So we're on a very strong footing from a measurement and technical basis. <clears throat> we like to use best practices wherever we can. For those of you who are, are familiar with it, you'll know the word balance scorecard or lean. If you're not, uh, just the balance scorecard is a framework for using information to manage, execute plans, and track performance. And it's called balanced because it uses more than just financial data to make decisions. It's, in a sense, holistic. It's designed to give that decision maker more than just one set of data, but, but a collection of, of measures that allow them to understand uh, how to make a better decision, understand the implications of their decision, and in some ways forecast what could possibly happen. And Lean is an improvement methodology, which we will probably be offering a workshop here maybe within the next three or four months, in which we'll, we'll invite you. But uh, what we use from Lean as an improvement methodology is this idea of root cause analysis. Our measures are designed to help decision makers understand why performance is what it is and which key factor is impacting it. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. <clears throat> Our education analytics planning improvement pl platform really is about, number one, a data hub in which rather than building a data warehouse, we take data from all those silos to feed into the kind of data that you need to support decision making, planning, and uh, improvement. Uh, so the data hub provides the data. These tools are all integrated. Uh, they're integrated into this data hub our analytics tools, our benchmarking tools, our planning tools, internal management. Uh, it really creates an informa a district, a, a university-wide information system in which all the data can be put in one place and the tools developed that it, you actually utilize that data. Uh, all we're gonna talk about and use in this pilot project are the benchmarking and analytics capabilities. The balance scorecard is something I just wanna take a few minutes to explain. Uh, the balance scorecard is the framework that we use, uh, for in, not in every single tool that we offer, but certainly in the analysis and planning tools. Uh, the balance scorecard was developed out of Harvard in the 1990s, and it was developed as a, as a framework to help leaders use more than just financial data to make decisions. Uh, the balance scorecard, as you can see here, focuses on centrally your vision, mission, strategy, and goals, which ultimately are there to help you achieve student outcomes. What we want to be able to do is look at how we're operating and spending money and working from a perspective of efficiency. Are we efficiently executing this plan? Are we doing so productively? Are our resources aligned along our strategic goals and priorities? Are we getting the quality results that we should be given the money we're spending? 
and the effort we're making and are the service levels, the drivers of everything we're doing, whether it's enrollment, admissions, uh, student support, residential life are the drivers telling us that uh, we need to spend more, that we need to spend less, that the activity is increasing. We want to be able to match our spending to the factors that are driving uh, our organization to, to serve. So that framework is really important because, uh, you know, when you look at all the data you have, you ask yourself, where do you start? How do you start? When you have a framework in which you're trying to, to get the truth about what's going on, it simplifies the process immensely. Uh, so our, our approach, number one, is going to create transparency. We want to be able to look inside and understand how we're doing, where we've been, how we're doing, and where we're headed, and be able to compare that to peers. We want to focus on actionable measures, measures that can actually pinpoint issues and lead us to an action that will change the result. We want to make we want to use best practices, uh, which is intertwined with this measurement system we have. So we're using practices, I think, as we talked about root cause analysis and some accounting tools such as activity based counting and management accounting. <clears throat> Finally, we're using benchmarking. We think that's a really important tool uh, element of this. Uh, we want to make sure, however, that everybody understands the benchmarking that we're doing is not there to be able to uh, compare. It's there for comparison, but what we don't want to do is use it in a negative way. We don't want to make someone feel badly because they're apparently underperforming. Um, we want to use this information as a learning tool because if we use it for learning and take the onus off accountability in a sense, or um, pointing the finger, we'll get a lot more results because it, we can be much more encouraging and open minds up to exploring other ways of doing things. Uh, the kinds of measures and benchmarks, these are the measures, the categories uh, that we're looking at. Uh, again, we tried to take a cross section of measures from those four different areas that we talked about, revenues, expenses, um, outcomes, as well as revenues, expenses, outcomes, and operating and administrative costs. The data requirements for this project are for option one, in which you're only using the strategic analysis tool, strategic uh, system, is 150 data elements. If you're using option two as well, which is the facilities benchmarking tool, uh, you'll, you'll be using another 50, you'll be needing another 50 data elements for that. The process is very simple. We provide the tool with the definitions. You complete the data. The data will be financial, HR, operational, student, student outcome related, and some other categories. When that information gets divided up into a group of, of representative people who actually have to collect it and may use it, the amount of time you're gonna spend on this individually is gonna be maybe a couple hours, as long as you're, you're organized and you have this data available. I will just tell you that some will learn that their data isn't as clean and organized as they thought, and that in and of itself is a good thing because you don't wanna be making decisions based on bad data. So what we're gonna do now is just take a look at the dashboards and scorecards uh, that we use to do this. So the way this works is it we give you the tool, you send back the tool populated with your data. We load it into our system. The system will do the presentation analytics and, and graphing. And uh, those of you that are in option, select option one, you'll get a paper printout. Those of you that select option two will get the, the facility assessment as well as access to the system through the end of December. So let's go ahead and look at some of the tools that we're using. Uh, I'm sorry, some of the uh, results in this hypothetical situation. So what you're going to see here, I'll walk you through the traditional measures of revenue, expenses, etc. So this is a typical dashboard. You're going to see that it's benchmarking revenue. Uh, this is the dashboard side in which we visually present the data and graphics that allow you to see relative trends. Uh, we also present it in a scorecard, which has not only, for example, revenues, but we're going to have some measures down here. Um, we're also going to have some measures such as how much are we spending per student for this particular, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, this is revenues. What is the revenue per student and what are the revenues per credit hour? If we had the detail, we could add what are the economics per class. That's a whole nother level of data collection, however. We're trying to keep this at a relatively high level. So each one of these is going to show you actual numbers with some measures. It's going to show you if, if it's if appropriate revenues per student, revenues per credit hour. In these, as you can see, these tabs, uh, you can press these to see 
a ranked graph and is simply a bar graph that shows the relative portion of each one of these contributors. It's going to show you a pie chart and, and how that's broken out. It's also going to calculate percent change. So this will just do an automatic calculation of the percent difference between 2016 and 17. A nice little tool if you want to, <clears throat> why would you want to do this, especially in the side of expense? You want to be able to take a look at this and ask if someone's costs appear to be growing by 5 to 10 percent, why is that? Why is everyone else at 2 percent? Uh, it saves you a lot of time and it's going to highlight areas uh, that you need to be paying attention to or should be. The next obvious area is expenses. And as you can see here, uh, we just, in this case, just chose to plot expense actual values. We could have plotted metrics such as percent operations, percent admin, uh, percent uh, student support, percent instruction. There's a multitude of ways that we can take this data presented. But this is the, the expense side. Uh, this next one represents what we would call a strategic analysis. And the strategic analysis combines uh, a number of different measurements, such as student enrollment, annual tuition, retention rate for freshmen, um, admission conversion rate, graduation rate, 100 percent, and uh, employment upon graduation. So what we want to do here is use measures to provide a, a picture of how we're doing from the standpoint of enrollment, tuition, the spending, the costs, the process maybe, and then student outcomes. All right. And again, the beauty of these dashboards is these can be combined in any fashion that uh, fits your particular organization. For this study, you're going to see it this way. It may be modified as we bring the data together and start to uh, analyze it. And again, the results are down here for each one of these categories. You can see we have different measures that you may not see up here. So I do think we had retention. We had admission conversion rate. Uh, we do have the operation admin student expense ratios down here. Um, we have debt upon graduation, which we don't have up there. We have some operation, just beginning to develop the operation deficiency measures, such as facility cost per square foot, um, information technology cost per user. I'm going to ask you for users. I don't have that in the data set we have right now. Admissions efficiency advancement return, uh, which is a return on the amount of money that's being spent on investment, on advancement cost per student. And then now, we, now we're developing staff ratios down here, productivity measures. So as you can see from a strategic standpoint, we're using that balanced scorecard idea where we're not just talking about revenues and expenses. We really want to talk about outcomes and efficiencies and ratios <clears throat> as it relates to staff and uh, staff service levels. Uh, the other thing that you can look at with this tool is the profile the tip of the students. So what we have here, just average ACT scores for math, English, uh, school GPA. And this next slide is uh, administrative services, which breaks it down in a number of different ways. As an example, dollars per credit hour, dollars per student, and um, in actual dollars being spent. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you the benchmarking tool itself. So uh, what you would have the access to do if you go with option two is to pick the year that you'd like to benchmark. Uh, select the data set. You know, I don't think you're going to have any other choice in the Christian College University. And then with this tool, then you pick the, the colleges and universities that you want to benchmark with. In this case, since we don't have all this detail on all these colleges and universities, we're going to pick the three that uh, we're using right now. We click big begin benchmark benchmarking. If we wanted to, we could have given this group a name and come back and just pulled that group name instead of selecting individual ones. And with this, we're going to pick a uh, area that we want to benchmark. And let's say that it happens to be um, oh, the application process. We select that, and we automatically get this nice, very colorful graphic. I'll shrink this just a little bit. There we go. So you can see that we, you know, this is going to compare the, the district, the, the universities that you selected, and calculate a peer group, peer group average. And this is for undergraduate applications. That was, that's what that's for. So uh, again, the benchmarking shows it visually. And then down here, you have the measure, each college or university, and then the peer group average. And as you can see, it's very simple. So I'm just giving you a sample. We're not going to go through all the different kinds of tools that ultimately will be developed. You can see it's very easy to use. It's menu driven. Uh, it's, it, would, it gives you the ability to use the same tool 
uh, to distribute information to every area. You can add academic area information in here, human resource information, which we're collecting. So every department can have a piece of this tool and have a dashboard or more that's dedicated to their use. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So our deliverables to participants are number one, uh, that we're gonna take the time to collect, organize, analyze, and present this data. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because one, we believe in Christian education, and two, we wanna develop a tool that will be used by as many Christian education organizations as possible. And, and a key there for you, if what you're interested in is benchmarking, is you have a material number of, of entities to benchmark with. Hopefully you'll see this kind of tool in and of itself, even without the benchmarking data, is very powerful. But we know that district that we know that universities are interested in uh, benchmarks. So option one, participants get a report. Option two, get a report. They get access to the dashboards and scorecards. They uh, have the ability to, to benchmark uh, with the district, with the universities that we have in here. Uh, they would get the facility analytics-based assessment of their university facilities and then online access to for other users. The process, which we are now at this stage of sending out the data collection tool and definitions, we're hoping to see that back in two months and then have the cards and the reports ready by the 17th of June and uh, actually present the results at a date which is to be determined. That presentation will include some of our training and strategic analysis and, and data-driven decision-making. So the purpose here, again, introduce your organization to the use of measures, analytics, and business intelligence. The, the, the universities, the public universities, the private universities are all moving in this direction. It is and will be a strategic advantage for them. I, I personally believe that you have to do this. You can't wait uh, until it's too late. You can't wait until it's gonna, it's gonna be impossible to catch up. We're giving you a very simple way of moving forward with this. Uh, we're going to help you share data in a way that's very easy, help you share best practices if that's what you want to do. We're going to help you expand your capacity to use data in these areas of assessment, planning, monitoring, and improvement. So uh, the purpose here is really threefold, as I said, very beneficial for those who participate. Let's talk about how we should, how I recommend you execute this project. But again, with 150 variables, it shouldn't be too difficult. But the first thing you want to do is put a team together. You can show them this video, by the way, as an introduction. These are the different departments that uh, easily could be represented. You'll know your organization better than I, so you're going to have to decide who gets invited to this. But generally, you want the people that know the data and are going to be responsible for collecting it and at some point actually using it. Uh, in terms of data collection and accuracy, uh, use the data definitions that we provide. They're usually pretty straightforward. Strive for the best accuracy but don't spend excessive amount of time on data you don't have. Don't spend a week or, or multiple days on one particular measure. Uh, come up with the best estimate you can if that's what you're stuck with, uh, but don't make this an, an excessively time-consuming exercise. Try to get it done within 60 days. Identify areas where better data management practices could be used. Uh, chances are you're gonna find that. You may find that your data isn't as clean as you would like. Keep track of ideas you may have for measurement and benchmarking. We're very open-minded to this and want to see this grow over time. Uh, in terms of project completion, we'll provide a summary report. We'll do a presentation of the results. Um, we're going to be looking for feedback on how we can improve this. And then we'd, we're going to ask you to consider next steps. Those next steps could be to select option two, which is going to give you access to the tool as well as the uh, facilities audit analytics audit. Uh, we could expand the scope or depth of analysis. It may be that one or two of these areas are of great interest to people and we could target that particular area within the group that participate and outside. Uh, we can select other areas, same thing for, for deeper drills. And if you want to, if you, if you have an inclination, a desire to establish your own internal business, excuse me, intelligence capabilities, then we can start to have a discussion about what it would take to build this data hub what kind of dashboards you'd like, and what kind of measures you'd like to see to meet your own internal specific purposes. So in summary, uh, I just think this is a great opportunity for you, if you're listening to this, to participate. It's, uh, it's different than what's currently being done. 
different means you're going to get different views, different perspectives, different means you're most likely going to get more value from this, especially if you've been doing the, using these other tools for quite some time. Uh, it's going to give you the opportunity to have actual real world standards that you can compare with to your peers, which can have a huge impact, especially in areas in, in which you're going to identify that you're strong and have best practices and those that you're going to need to improve on. Uh, there's a minimal time commitment. Even if you spent the additional $1,500 to get to option two, that's not a, an excessive amount of money. And this is going to give you an opportunity to grow and learn uh, in a very short period of time. And it may take you years to catch up if you're just kept picking up on this kind of information in a very informal way. So I hope you decide to join this initiative. Uh, you're going to help yourself. You're going to help Christian education in general. And I don't think you regret it at all. If you have any questions about this, please call me. My name is Steve Paris, P-E-R-E-U-S. My number is 419-392-1775. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.